Everything happens for a reason. When I was an atheist, I did not believe this one bit. I brushed it off and thought nothing of it. In a logical universe, anything and everything can happen. But soon my parade of logic ended, and I fell into a deep limbo of questioning everything. When it was my time to have my awakening triggered by destiny, I had to rethink it all. It was because that logic I used to know so well felt so wrong when I met someone. Following logic every time definitely did not work at all. I sat in the darkness, not understanding why my previous ways of thinking couldn't get me out of the darkest stage of my life, or make sense of anything. When I realized the logic I knew was so wrong when I felt the otherworldly sixth senses I did, that is when I realized the logic we teach is one-sided and harmful. As people came and went and my situations pass and go after learning so much, it was then that I realized my life had beat me up into believing in intuition. Not a book, not a website, but life itself showed me what was wrong with the way I was living. Yes, everything happens for a reason. Even if you do not believe it, you will one day. For everything has its place. Everything will fit together one day. Nothing that left you, you have missed out on. And what is for you will never pass you. Yes, fate and destiny exist. Your free will may determine how long it takes you to get there, what detours you may need, and what additional lessons you may need to learn. But all of the regret and disappointment I had, it all came from the fact that I was disappointed I couldn't force open a door that wasn't even meant for me in the first place. All the shame, guilt, and regret I carried with me all my life for not accomplishing certain things, it all disappeared when I realized those doors will open for you when it's time, and when it's meant to happen. It's all about the balance between knowing when to fight for something, and when to let the higher power take you where you need to go. Think of it as, sometimes the door will open completely, and sometimes the door will need you to push a little harder when it unlocks for you. I was the person you could imagine banging and pushing a door that was made of steel and was stone hard shut. You do not need to bother yourself with the metal doors shut tight, for usually, disappointment does not come out of inability, but unrealistic expectation. Just like how overworking and overexercising are bad, or laying in bed all day, it's the balance between the two that help you live a happy and healthy life. This is what I learned. As someone who used to think that all failures and missed opportunities were completely my fault and lack of hard work, I have learned that those were key failures that have so perfectly shaped me exactly into the person I have dreamed of becoming. I remember when I was in middle school, I was told that the smartest kids would get into the AP program. I did not get in. I felt shame and guilt. I felt less than. I thought it was my fault for not being smart enough that I didn't go to that school. I had always been the best at everything, and when people found out that I didn't get in, they questioned and pestered me. But when I went to my home high school instead and had the teachers that I had, the very teachers that helped me realize that I wanted to do art for a living. If I went to the AP program, would I have found those very teachers? Would I have pursued art or would I have tried to pursue things I didn't love out of social approval? I have a feeling if I went to AP, I would have pursued things like math and business. If I was in the AP program, I wouldn't have pursued art in the name of one early university course. When I didn't get into Sheridan, I felt shame and guilt. I thought it was my fault for not being good enough, and that I didn't get into that school. I actually stopped drawing completely. But when I discovered OCAD's advertising program, and was able to self-reflect, would I have become somebody who didn't need anybody's approval to create? If I went to Sheridan, I would have abandoned my love for film, dance, music, and freedom. Sheridan was not the place for me. I had been pretending. 
If I got into Sheridan, I would have realized I was pretending to myself too late when I had already made the dire commitment. You may not realize it then, but you will one day. One day you will see that rejection is protection. Rejection is actually redirection. And your experience with sadness may be the thing that will drive you to become more passionate about everything you do when you become happy again. When I awakened and fell into a deep depression, instead of my fear of scrambling for the answers coming true, I realized all of them came to me exactly when I needed if I became receptive. For the higher power will give you the last pieces of the puzzle each one of us has been sent to earth to complete. You just have to trust it and be patient. For everything will make sense one day. Yes, work hard, but don't blame and shame yourself for the things the little tiny you can't make happen by yourself. You have your part and the divine has theirs. They will meet you halfway. Spirit is one of the best mediators. All those failures, as I have said before, were redirections. How did it make sense to blame myself for something that I didn't even cause? I shouldn't be sad for those gifts that marked the pillars of the way toward my destiny. When I was an atheist, I looked down on the concept of God does everything. However, both are true. Yes, you must work hard, but the higher power looking over all of us will reward that work when it's time. You co-create your destiny and your life. You do not need to feel ashamed of not knowing where to go or being lost. As long as you try to do everything you can do, the last bits will come in the form of divine power at the time it is meant to. Both exist, both work together. And at first when I was still learning this, I became frustrated and impatient often. But every regret, fear, and disappointment of mine started to disappear as I accepted it all. And the reality that I didn't have complete control over every little tiny thing. As we are a small little 3D humans, sometimes we cannot see there is another path that will make us even happier than the one we expect. I also learned this with emotion and logic. No way of living is better. If you are hyperlogical, you will often dwell in regret of that certain thing that you wanted to happen. If you are hyper-emotional, you will lose your way with the lack of organization and planning to move forward in life. You need both. All of these wars of people talking over each other, saying this and that were better. After awakening and coming full circle, not by books or reading things on the internet, by having the actual divine and reality sit me down and tell me. Balance. It's both. Logic and emotion, sadness and happiness, regret and gratefulness, hard work and surrender, practicality and intuition. Everything has its place. Even planet Earth has its place in all this. For all of its scary problems that need fixing, it's all for a reason. And I became somebody who was no longer closed-minded and rigid. I finally acknowledged what I knew deep down for a long time. Yes, there is a higher power. And I will meet them halfway. Without lessons, how can people learn to infinitely choose the light every time by their own will? Yes, a physical law can guide people. But what if people could live without them because of divine morality? My awakening was trying to show me that many times the physical reality is not what was true. You need to be connected to the physical and the spiritual as a human. This is how we will ascend. It starts with our consciousness realizing the fifth dimension. Remembering that the spirit realm is the most real realm. And this is the path I want to help you on. To find your intuition. For the missing pieces we often feel when we have taught to only believe in physical reality, that intuition will fill all the right places to the point where you cannot deny it is the second half of you that you have been missing this entire time. So why does sadness exist? To a newly awakened person, the answer is too obvious to me now. Sadness exists so happiness can exist. 
if you didn't have things to mourn or learn from, how would you have things to appreciate and be grateful for? If both the rain and sun didn't exist, and you haven't let time nourish their growth, how could the plants grow strong and healthy and bear fruit? Sometimes we may go through extremely hard times and ask, if the Creator existed, why would the Divine let you become so sad? Well, now I have the answer. It is so you can learn to be happy on your own. These are soul lessons your soul signed up for. And you can handle it. The universe will never give you something you cannot handle. After all, here I am. For if I never went through such things, I would never have become so happy like I am now. For a happiness that is not an illusion made by expensive cars or big houses is the most precious thing of all. And good and eternal things made of pure light like that don't come easy. They come with hard work and trust in the universe. These extremely sad and tough times will pass in time if you choose to step forward and do what you can do while believing at the same time. To create such an opportunity for yourself, you will be happy you learned such lessons. Your sadness is the gateway to eternal happiness. For if you can conquer this, you will be able to conquer anything. If you can conquer what's within, the rest comes easy. Things fall apart so they can be built even stronger the next time. For every loss and pain, you will understand one day. The best is yet to come. If I never went through what I did, I would have never become the beautiful, carefree, and self-forgiving person I am now. I would have never become a person who can live the rest of my life with absolutely zero regret. People envy such an attitude, right? Your sadness can be used to become such a person. You will understand it all one day, for eternal strength and happiness can only come from learning how to step out of the darkness on your own. This is Earth's time to do that. We will become souls who will choose the light every time, as we slowly learn that it is inevitably the thing to all well-being. I believe that every weak person stuck in the dark will be strong enough to step into the light one day. It may not be tomorrow or next month, but good things take time and there is no rush. Through different chances and maybe different lifetimes, do not worry. Focus on the best you can do here and now, and trust that one day everybody will ascend, including yourself. Forgive yourself for the things you can no longer control, and have faith for the next things coming. You are not alone, and I'll be right here whenever you need to hear this again. My dearest you, your sadness is not who you are, but the catalyst of it all, and I believe in you. Let the acceptance of the world's polarity guide you to where you're meant to be. Listen to your heart and what you feel is right, and you will get there to join me by my side. For all the losses guided me to where I need to be. Sometimes what appear to be curses in the moment are blessings and gifts. For a relationship that broke me into a million pieces ended up being the thing that made my throne one million steps tall. Don't give up when it comes to the love you want to pour into your life. You can still pour in that love, even if you're going through hard times. The darker the room, the more potential can a candle shine brighter. Now I look back and I understand. Everything I lost was for a reason. It was so I can get here, where my dream is, to grow into the person I've always dreamed of becoming. If humanity was forced to be the light, it would no longer be eternal. For an eternal heaven is where every soul is independently aware that the light is the only way to live in true satisfaction. Where we all fully understand happiness. Back on the other side, there is no sadness nor challenge. And that comes with peace and eternal stability, but also stagnancy. Up in heaven where there is no pain, people cannot grow. The earth is currently evil because it provides us with the choice and the opportunity to warn why you should choose the light for yourself. Not because of an order or a rule, but because you yourself understand. 
this is why you should value your time here. Because these challenges are your gateway to becoming an amazing person. It may not happen right away, but with every step you choose to take out of pure love for yourself, it will become easier and easier. Be patient with yourself. It is Earth's time to ascend, faster than ever before, and there are people that are sent here to help you. Divine spirits are carrying out timelines more detailed and articulate than ever before, and people whose souls have been in different walks of life, species, and even galaxies, with gifts and knowledge who are ready to help you activate yours. People who know what an eternal civilization looks like. You are part of it all. So trust that you will be exactly where you need to be, when you need to be. Life's challenges are tough, but I believe that you are even tougher. After all, you've survived on Earth like this and haven't become someone who actively wants to hurt others. I'd say you're already on the right track. Everything happens for a reason. Even if you do not see the justice immediately, remember that this world is a long cycle of incarnation and lessons, and justice spans over the many lifetimes and pathways we are all sent on, so that one day, evil can no longer feed off of us here. You, kind soul, do not need to carry the burden of what you are not responsible for. I used to think all the world's problems were mine to fix, until I disconnected from it all and realized the best thing I could do was focus on my part in this grand puzzle we call destiny. As long as you fight to be the best version of yourself, I promise you, you will understand one day.